I have to say, I actually thought that Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was kind of all right. I know I'm probably in the minority there because it understandably wasn't well received. It was a bit sillier by comparison to the original films and nowhere near as good, but I thought there's still life in the old indie dog yet, and with the right script and the right director, who knows, maybe a fifth and final film could be possible if it had been done three to four years after 2008. The problem is they just waited too long to make this new Indiana Jones film, The Dial of Destiny, very weak name. I mean, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was made back in 2008, 14 years ago. Well, it's hard to believe it's been that long. Harrison Ford was kind of pushing it back then, playing an action-adventure hero. 14 years later, he's 80 years old. Hard to believe, given that he looks really well for his age, and still very spry. I mean, he actually kind of pulls it off pretty convincingly in some of these sequences shown in the trailer, you know, with the aid of CGI, except for this shot on the horse, where it's clear that his face is being CGI'd onto a stuntman. The film is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, like I say. Now, I haven't done very many trailer reaction videos. I've done a few, but not that many. I generally don't really like them. But I'm scripting this video to get my thoughts in order, and also I've obviously watched this trailer several times already. I wanted to really discuss audience expectations and reactions to these kinds of productions, given where pop culture, entertainment, and Hollywood has gone in the past few years. The trailer, by itself actually doesn't look that bad. But of course, trailers can be, and often are, extremely deceptive, and the film could be utterly rubbish. But the trailer could make it look amazing. Who knows? This could be utter rubbish. Or it could be utter woke rubbish. Regardless, we won't know until it's released. But there is an expectation now that anything from Disney, and this is a Disney film, is probably going to be woke. And of course, I think that given the times we live in, fans have every reason to be concerned. Also, there's concern about the character of Helena, who is Dr. Jones' goddaughter in this film, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. People are worried that her character is going to be taking up Indy's mantle, so to speak, and that she'll be kind of a Mary Sue who will be showing him up and putting him in his place. You know, upstaging the primary character in his own movie. This may or may not be the case, but we will have to wait and see. It would hardly be surprising if it turned out to be the situation. According to the Wikipedia plot breakdown, uh, the story is as follows. In 1969, American archaeologist and adventurer Indiana Jones lives against the backdrop of the space race. Jones had started to feel doubts when the US government recruited former World War II enemies in their desperation to beat the Soviet Union out in the competition to make it to space. His goddaughter Helena accompanies him on his journey. Meanwhile, Voller, a NASA member and ex-Nazi involved with the moon landing program, wishes to make the world into a better place as he sees fit. Okay, so it sounds like the story has the potential to be a little bit more grounded in reality than the Crystal Skull, which would hardly be difficult. I like some of the dialogue in the trailer. It's all very sentimental, and it's nice to see Jonathan Rhys Davies back, but this looks like a lot of CGI was deployed in order to make it possible to have Harrison Ford in the action scenes, and it kind of shows. It strains believability to have an 80-year-old man doing intense action and fight scenes. And sure, this is a fantasy adventure movie, but at least in Crystal Skull, they could just about get away with him doing the running around and fighting and so forth. But now you can't help but notice his age. And that will, to some extent, take you out of the experience. It's sort of like how I feel about Patrick Stewart as Captain Picard in Star Trek Picard. He's just a little bit too old to play the character, in my opinion. Likewise, in this film, Harrison Ford's age just appears to be too noticeable, and maybe sleeping dogs should have been let lie. Now, there appears to be some flashback scenes because there's some de-aging in this film, which looks reasonably good. It appears he's been de-aged all the way back to the way he was when he was 30 or 40 years old, 
Now, if they had gargantuan amounts of money, perhaps they could have de-aged Harrison Ford for the entire movie and just did a straight-up prequel based in the 1930s or 40s. It would have cost the Earth to de-age him for a two-hour movie, but at least it would have been easier to sell Indiana Jones and indeed Harrison Ford as an action hero in his 30s rather than in his 80s. Indy didn't have to come back. I don't think fans really wanted to see Harrison Ford grab his hat and whip once again at 80. I don't really think they wanted him to do that at 70, to be honest. And I think fans have every right to be concerned about the potential for wokeness or emasculation of this beloved character, given the trajectory of Hollywood in recent years, and of course, given what Disney has done to both Star Wars and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The issue really is that nowadays, even if a film doesn't have any wokeness, studios have done so much damage to so many intellectual properties in the past few years that audiences have become, understandably and justifiably, cynical, distrusting and jaded. They've been burned too many times. They see the return of Indiana Jones and they just assume that the character and the legacy is going to be sullied and vandalised by current year identity politics agendas. And that's clear from some of the comments for the trailer on YouTube. We shall see. Perhaps this film will turn out to be not that bad. But let's be honest, it's never going to beat the original trilogy.